Hello, greetings from Chile. We form part of a research group focused on accessibility and inclusion. Our team is composed of special educators, designers, engineers and an advisory panel, or AP, formed by a group of nine adults with intellectual disability. Our theoretical framework addresses inclusive research and co-design, where people with ID engage in partnership with researchers as experts by experience. We have been working together for the last three years on self-determination, cognitive accessibility and independent living. All these experiences have included exploratory phases of research and generative stages of design, where the team proposes products and tools from a universal design approach. Here we present our efforts for doing inclusive research and co-design. We discuss what we have learned, what methods we have developed, and finally, what tools we have devised. We humbly hope these efforts may help other designers and colleagues. Currently, the definition of disability explains it as the gap between individual capacities and limitations and the demands posed by the environment. This construct of disability highlights the importance of interaction with the built environment as responsible for making disability poignant. We like this approach because it turns disability into a design problem. We have assumed the double diamond as a useful map to locate ourselves within the process and connect inclusive research and co-design. Inclusive research has involved, from the beginning, making all processes and purposes transparent to the team. For the AP, it has meant moving from a role of subjects to collaborative partners. Co-design has meant bringing the creative process closer to the team, promoting imagination and facilitating formal expression, as well as the ability to visualize goals and verbalize desires. Preparation workshops are mainly led by special educators, who provide material, reinforce concepts and develop activities that involve strengthening problem-solving skills in the AP. Among the main supports necessary, we highlight the importance of easy-read material in texts and presentations, which help a better understanding of the concepts and procedures involved. The AP helps us to identify the needs of people with ID and therefore, establish the objectives of the work, which allows setting their ownership as significant research stakeholders. Considering the difficulties that regular conversations and interviews pose, we devised elicitation logs to facilitate communication and transcend barriers, such as shyness, lack of vocabulary or influence that the other preceding respondents may exert when talking in groups. Being able to access sincere and reliable testimonies is critical for research endeavors. These logs facilitate the elicitation of more intimate and private matters which are relevant to the interviewee. The AP responded in each session by placing pre-written cards with concepts. We also use design probes during field research. We learn that probes need to work as instructional and conversational instruments that help researchers navigate through space, recording their experience in a structured fashion, helping to remember the order of the procedures and the actions to be carried out. We also learn that probes also work as props that reinforce the role of the researcher, especially in public places. In a research through design mode, these probes evolved into a cognitive accessibility application to navigate and use public services, called PICTOS. We plan to launch it this spring. Within the natural difficulty of devising original concepts for non-designers, for people with ID, imagining desirable futures has proven to be a difficult mindset to achieve as it requires speculative and abstract thinking. But also, thinking about the future is an especially difficult subject, involving a lot of uncertainty, the death of parents and perhaps loneliness or abandonment. Ideation workshops are an attempt to overcome these difficulties by stimulating a playful environment, free from pressures that intimidate and block participants' creativity. These workshops are located in the tradition of fictional inquiry, they articulate generative tools and theatricalization as mean for interaction and play. The structure of this ideation technique requires a script that presents a fictional context that poses challenges in the form of problems to be solved a design toolkit for the creation of gadgets that will help solve the challenge and, finally, the enacting of the solution. These performances build the context and activate the props revealing their functionalities and the way to interact with them. The playful atmosphere generated by these sketches accentuates a playful mood that, in turn, contributes to a creative atmosphere that allows further improvisation. The design of the toolkit must balance simplicity and flexibility. From simple elements, they must allow unexpected and novel solutions. 
kids must be able to turn concepts into unmanipulable concrete objects and act as a prop. Narrative, on the other hand, allows the insertion of these artifacts in stories that give them meaning and plausibility. If we add the fantasy of fiction, we can activate the imagination and the state of play in the participants, and encourage the creative leap from known to unknown, from comprehension to the invention. As a result, we learn that for the development of adequate supports for inclusive co-design, we can distinguish aspects of content, structure and operation. By content, we refer to the language or labels used, spoken or visual, as well as the amount and density of information presented at each moment. By structure or syntax we mean hierarchy, coherence and consistency of parts as their relationship within a structured system. By operation or functioning we mean the explicit expectations, anticipations, interfaces and all dialogical elements that pose to the user an idea for their interpretation in the context of decision making and action taking. Although we elaborate supports collaboratively, we can characterize different authorities among team members. We recognize the disciplinary leadership of education in the development of content supports, in materials that present new concepts and prepares the team to contextualize research objectives and tasks. The design discipline, on the other hand, assumes the leadership in the elaboration of the structure supports, by developing materials and toolkits that concretize concepts and allow to articulate new ideas collectively. The operating supports, on the other hand, are led by the AP. They present and suggest the form and functions that different supports should assume to be usable and conform to their cognitive model. Listening to the AP voice also involves careful discourse analysis searching for opportunities and themes for future inquiry. This analysis is, paradoxically, still out of reach to the AP, although real efforts have been made to return these insights in inclusive debriefing sessions. Today, the participation of people with ID in co-design processes is not questioned, furthermore identified as necessary for achieving true accessibility of products. Thank you.